Hey, Radical fans, Phil here. Andrew here. We're going to talk today about uh, bowling terms. People always write in and say, what does this mean? What does that mean? So we're going to just randomly talk about some of the terms. And yeah, sometimes we just get talking. We understand the bowling lingo between, between us, and right. then we don't really realize that some of you may not understand what we're talking about. Yeah, I mean, you understand ball and pins. We got that. We won't yeah. cover that today. <laughs> action, as in action, like betting action, uh, pin action. You know, uh, years ago, my day was action. You're action bowler. You went and bowled for a living. You, you, you hustled if you could. You, you bowled people matches in different houses. Yep. But nowadays, it's pin action, I guess, right? No, I, I mean, it depends. Yeah. Like, when I hear the word action, I'm thinking I'm shoeing up about to go bowl for right, some money. Right, bowl for some money. So, like, yeah, yeah. it depends, I guess, uh, where you're from. I yeah. think that mm -hmm. you being from New York, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm being from the Detroitish area, Flint area. Right. Action is a very common it, thing. It like, was we always definitely did. bowl right. uh, for some money. So, yeah. uh, but in some places when you hear action you might be talking about pin action like what yeah. kind of pin action do you leave the right. dreaded flat 10 or are you throwing a scout yeah, at it exactly. you throwing a messenger at it right i really like the other one better because that was profitable you know i'm not sure i guess we just never got to bowl against each other i know it ah, 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 ah. Uh, in my day a lot of guys went home broke saying that <laughs> <laughs> the hard way what year is it well, from like 80... No, I was just asking what year is it you know, now. What year is it now? It's a little different now. Yeah, that's what... There's a difference between bowling action and being smart. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> area. Yeah, area is another good one. What is yeah, area? Yeah, how uh, much area do you yeah. have on the lane? Or how much miss room? That's right. Yeah, miss room is always... If you have a lot of area, you have a lot of miss room. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, uh, you always, you know, I'm checking how much area I have. Yeah. Area, we used to say we got an area check a lot of times. Yeah, you miss a few, right? Yeah, well, hey, I got okay. there. Guess yeah, what? I have some yeah. misroom. Yeah, so that's whenever again, we modern talk, game, right? Modern game. Yeah, when, yeah. We talk, yeah. when we're talking about having area, we're talking about how much misroom we have. And uh, yeah. if you have a lot of area, you're bowling pretty good. How many boards left and right are your target? Hopefully a lot. Exactly. That's a lot of area. And that's a lot of area. That's the way we covered area. <laughs> Back end. Yeah, back end is back a good end. one. Well, you know, some people have a lot of back end, and then there's some that don't have a lot of back end. But in the bowling world, um, it's how much your ball hooks down lane, I guess, the way we look at it, right? Wait, we're talking about bowling? Yeah, we're talking about bowling. Oh, okay. Time, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so back end is how much motion down the lane down you're going to have. Yeah. Past those tracers, at those tracers. Right. If you have yeah. a lot of motion going down, you have a lot right. of back end motion. So a lot of times you'll hear terms uh, at the end of the oil line, when it comes yep. off the spot. Yeah, I, I use that it. term a lot, off the spot. How much does the ball hook off the spot? That's basically related to back end. Yep. The end. The last, we like to put the lane into three portions. The first 20 feet, the middle part of the lane is the middle 20 the mids, feet. right. And the last 20 feet is down lane. The back end. Or the back end. Yeah. And then uh, we do um, a lot of ball testing with Throwbot and Specto, and we give you that read of the um, entry angle, angle of entry, and hook angle. Yep. Yeah, and the hook angle is the one that's further down the lane, and that reads the most back end towards closer to the pins. The biggest motion. Right, and that's yep. where your biggest motion should occur. Yep. So back end. Through the beak. Through the beak is a good one. You know, I haven't heard that too often recently. No, uh-uh. But when you go through the beak, you're going through the head pin, you're probably leaving some sort of big split. Some design. If you get four, I hope all your friends are yelling four. Four, yeah, exactly. <laughs> my friends would definitely hit me with that. Oh, my that. God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Very heavily. Yeah. But and, through and, the beak. Yeah. yeah. Through the beak or to the face. Through the face. Through the face. Through the face. You know. Yeah. One of my uh, my favorite ones is uh, yeah coming from New York, a crossover strike where I'm from was called Jersey. Oh, because instead of Brooklyn. Because I was in Brooklyn. Oh, uh, okay. In so Jersey. Jer don't. Yeah, we you go we cross over Jersey. Um, when I moved out of New York and I bowled in Cleveland when I first moved there. You know, the guy crossed over, I said, yeah, you went Jersey. He looked at me like I had two heads. That's a Brooklyn strike. Well, not if you're from Brooklyn. So <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like the movie um, City Slickers. The sun rises in the east, except if you're in the east. Yeah. You know, then it rises in the west. So that was uh, one of the lines of City Slickers. But we do that with the, that's always a good one, because I have to catch myself to not Brooklyn. call it yeah, Jersey. Yeah. It's Brooklyn. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah. Belly the ball, again, is... I would not use as much, I would say, but right. when you belly the ball, you're giving it uh, angle. Yeah, head, going, head yeah, belly head was belly. another conversation. Yeah, right? so when you belly the ball, it means that you're going to go from playing straighter to making yeah, more angle, an angle, and you're going to make a more rounded shape yeah, instead and, of a straight line. Right, and in technical terms, it would be called launch angle, I guess. Yeah, your launch angle would get greater, greater. and then the right. motion would be right. that 
of a belly. Yeah, yeah. Well, some That's of why, us. That's why, right? You belly it. Some of us belly the ball better than others. Nice. Carry down is a, it, carry down is a real common term. A lot of times it's misused. Um, what it means is taking you off on the front part of the lane and put it to the back end of the lane. Or, the, or it seems as if your ball is traveling longer before making motion right. because there's more oil down yeah, the lane. But, but a lot of times it's misrepresented in the term of my ball's not hooking down lane, it must be carry down, as opposed to my ball's not hooking down lane because it's burning up in the front part yeah, of the lane. It's already that used all its and energy. And I, I don't have the right ball in my hand. Yeah, so carry down can be seen both different ways. Carry down is when the, the lane feels as if it's stretched where your ball is, does not have enough energy to come off the end of the pattern. Right. Um, but you never, like, more often than not, you're going to see more carry down when there's urethane being thrown and it travels some of that oil down the lane past exactly. its original break point. Yeah. But uh, really, every time you hear the word carry down, just think that the lane is stretched now, the pattern is yep. stretched, yeah. and either your ball is burning up or just it's, not it's just not hooking. Not yeah. Now you have to recognize when that happens because I get people call me up and say, "Hey, we bought that ball. It's hooking this ball in the world. It's not hooking." Well, it's, it's hooking. hooking. You just didn't see it. <laughs> it's it hooked before than you than could than see it. it. Yeah. 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 So uh, that's one of the carry downs problems with carry down is first of all you have to understand what it is. Yep. Drift. Okay. Well, drifting is footwork. When you that's it. when you drift, you're going to walk either left or right. Generally speaking, for right-handers, on the highest level of the sport, you'll see them drift to left to create more room for their elbow and well, shoulder. So let me ask you a question about that, not to interrupt you, but is that a drift or is that an intentional walk to the left or walk to the right? I perceive drift as... As you miss... I wanted to walk straight and I didn't. Okay. Right? I mean, you... If I stand way right and I, I, I have to throw it to the left, I would walk into my target. So you'd that's be not drifting. a drift, but it's not a drift. It's an intentional walk into the target. Oh, really? So the guy that stands on 23 and ends up on 27, he, uh, not intentionally, he drifted four boards to the left or four boards to the right. Okay. So, you know. When, when I use drift in teaching, when yeah. I'm teaching anybody how to bowl, especially if they have broader shoulders right. and I need them to drift to the left, uh -huh. I teach them to drift. I right. teach them to drift a few boards to the left to okay. create more room right. for their body. Yeah. So yeah, I guess it's just how you interpret it. Yeah. You know, um, you know, I work with some people at home, uh, you know, coaching them a little bit, and you know they start on 25 and ended up on, on 29. And I'm like, well, you drifted. Did you want to walk right? And he goes, no, I was straight. No, you drifted. Yeah. And then there's ways to correct that. Yeah. You know, in your in your uh, approach. But that's interesting. The good old fallback. Did you ever? Do you? Did you even know that term? Hey, I don't know if you were watching, but I gave him the good old fallback at the, uh, the players' championship, players championship this year. You did. I saw that. The results I, plus. Of course, I was watching. Yeah. Yeah. So the fallback would be when you start the ball on purpose, left of your intended target, so that it falls back to the pocket. Very rarely is this used yeah. too much, unless you're bowling on a house pattern with a very weak ball, right? Or a very long pattern. And we use the fallback a lot on long patterns, like 48 yeah. feet, 49 feet, 50 feet, because the ball is never going to really hook much. It's never no. going to curve mm -hmm. much. Right. So you're playing a very direct line, and you have to fall it back to the pocket. Yeah. So now, you know, in the old action days, we by the end of the night, you'd be playing fallbacks, and, you know, the pocket's at 18. You you'd start. be laying the ball down on 22 and throwing it at the head pin, and it would simply fall back into 18. Yep. And then you can barely get the five out, but... It works sometimes. It works sometimes, and that would be fallbacks. So the mass bias um, is a term that gets brought up a lot. Um, it's a preferred spin axis by definition, but it's a mark on the ball um, of where the mass is behind it is, is goes away from it when a ball spins. Yes. There's nothing under that. There's not like a weight block under that spot. People no. get that, oh, I drilled my mass bias out. Uh, you, you, there's no such thing. Yeah. You, you drill the indicator out. Yeah. And the mass bias is more for drilling purposes, That's really. It. So That's when it. you drill the ball, you're looking at the mass bias mm -hmm. as a point of reference as to how to drill your ball. And it's an I, orientation of the core is yes. what it puts it. Between and the, the that's why you don't see it on symmetrical bowling balls because right. there is right. no mass bias per se. Right, there's no orientation. The core is equal all the way around if it's symmetrical. Yeah. In an ASIM ball, it gives you the orientation of the core. What direction the core is pointed in faces the pin, CG, and the PSA. And that's what mass bias is. Plus and minus. You would much rather be a lot plus. A lot plus. Minus. So anything that you hear plus and minus in bowling is in regards to the mean score of 200. Right. 200 That's is it. par, per se. 
If you shoot over 200, you are now plus. If I shoot 257 game one, I am plus 57. And then you continue to add that score up, and that's how we would tell each other, or other bowlers, how are you bowling right. today? Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, hey, I shot 257, 254, 182, 126. I'm just plus 85. I'm, I'm plus, plus 12 20. today. Right, exactly. Yeah, now minus is always not such a good thing. I don't tell people. Yeah, I, I wasn't minus. I just stopped. <laughs> <laughs> that's plus and minus. And, uh, and if you bowl a lot of tournaments, you'll hear more and more about that. Out of bounds, that's another good one. Out of bounds is generally defined as when you do not have a lot of misroom to the right. right. When you are for right-handers or sure. to the left for left-handers. When you're right-hander and you miss right and the ball stays right and you hit the six pin, you have an out of bounds. Right. But you have to have an inbounds to have an out of bounds. Yes. But there so are some patterns where you have neither. An inbounds and you have an out of bounds. And if you have neither, you're probably a lot minus. Yeah. Um, years ago, we used to bowl a lot of mega buck tournaments and they would put out what we call like, we call it a dish. Okay. The outsides had oil and the insides hooked. Yeah. So if you pinched it, you get three off the left. And if you pitched it, you got three off the right. Yeah. And that so was you have a lot of out of bounds. It was a lot of out of bounds. So it's just um, whatever your target is, if anything right of it doesn't hook, that's an out of bounds. PAP is the positive access point. We talk about it in another video. Um, you'll see that the PAP is how you release the ball. It's and your it DNA. Very, right. It's your DNA, really. Right. How you release the ball, your positive access point will be um, for right handers to the right of your fingers and thumb. And it will be the point at which every ball that you have should be drilled off of. And it'll roll. When that ball comes off your hand, that's basically locked up at the point of release. Yep. And then the impact of the core dynamics takes over to flare off of that PAP. Yes, in two different directions. Right. As in finger pitch. So finger pitches are interesting and thumb pitches. Uh, it's the way your hand fits in a ball, the comfort of the direction of the finger holes. Yes, so pitch can be defined as forward reverse left and right. right. When you have forward pitch in the fingers, you're actually going towards your palm. If you have reverse pitch in the fingers, you're going away from the palm. The opposite can be said about your thumb. If you right. have forward pitch, you go towards the palm. If right. you have reverse, you go away from the palm. And then laterals are left and right. Yep. Yep. And then uh, that's just which direction in the ball right. it's sitting. And that's so this can change how the ball comes off your hand. Oh, immensely. By a lot. Right. So don't, we don't recommend you fiddling with pitches. Unless you're Let a your pro shop operator. Right. Let him do it. Take care exactly. of it. Exactly. Uh, another one is revs. That's a great one. You have uh, a lot of those, right? Not me. I have, um, I have just the right amount. Okay. And the right amount of revs is when it hits the pins and they all fall down. Okay. That's the right amount of revs. So revs is short for revolutions or right. the amount of times the ball will spin as it goes down the lane. But it's always categorized as if it's in a minute's time, correct? Yes. Yeah, so of which like it's a four second, three second, two second Like deal. when you hear RPMs, revolutions per minute. Right, right. So I wish I had 800, I only have 450. That's plenty, plenty. Now if you take revs and put accuracy in it, you become yeah. great bowler. Yes. Right. And, the, and your rev rate is, uh, it's, it's overrated to tell you the truth. I mean, you don't need to have 450, but you don't, you don't want to have 100. <laughs> Yeah. So there's somewhere in somewhere that. Somewhere in the middle. Yeah, and it's just a matter of. Um, Matching uh, the bowler right, power, to the pattern right. and the ball. Yeah, power and accuracy. Very much a matchup game. Right. Yep. Yeah, power and accuracy is the ideal scenario. If you think of it as a, a scale, like the scales of, time, of um, time or whatever, where it's balancing them, you yep. want to get that balance of accuracy and rev rate. Yep. Yeah. And that's where revs would come into play. Yeah, and speed. Right. Rollout. Well, that's pretty good. The rollout one is good. It's uh, not too often do you want your ball to roll out. You do not. So uh, when we yeah. talk about skid hook roll phase of ball motion, mm -hmm. you have the roll phase. If a ball rolls out, you want the ball to roll through the pins, keep that direction right. going through the pins. That's mm -hmm. how you knock them all over. If your ball rolls out, it deflects. Yeah, and it's when the transitional energy and the rotational energy are equal. The ball rolls forward and it has no more rotational energy, therefore it's going to deflect. Yes. And generally speaking, you're not going to knock too many pins over when it does. You are not going to want deflection. Good. Sandbagging. Wow. Sandbagging is a great term. You know, the, one of the coolest things, and people might be able to know where I live now, but I live close to a bar named Sandbaggers. Did you really? No, I do. You do? Like, no yeah. joke. That's how yeah. I found my house. Yeah. I find my house because I drive towards Sandbaggers. Is, <laughs> is it um, Sandbaggers because of bowling? 
No. No, it's just the just name of it. Sandbaggers. sandbaggers. Yeah. So sandbaggers are people that shave their averages so that they can have an advantage in a handicap tournament. Yeah, so like uh, a yeah. 210 average person uh, yeah. averages 180 on purpose to get that handicap, handicap for events, right. and therefore they are a sandbagger. Yeah, yeah. So in the old days of sandbagging, when people did that, they ended up in a parking lot, probably something broken. Is that because what they did in Brooklyn? That's what they did. You know, people, we had a bowling center. Uh, quick story about that. We had a bowling center called Green Acres. It was 24 hours a, a, a day, seven days a week, and there were thousand-dollar matches going on all day. There'd be two 150 bowlers bowling for a thousand dollars, and two 200 bowlers bowling for a thousand dollars or more. Um, but the guy at 150, if he was really 165, he'd be like the guy on uh, Kingpin. Oh. Yeah, That's you don't want to be sandbagging. Yeah, you don't want to be sandbagging uh, in a money match. Yeah, you know, if you were 150 and uh, you had legitimate, it was a good competition. If you were sandbagging, you could end up in the wrong part of town. What yeah. happens if somebody's just practicing and they get better? Before well, that the was next fine team? because you know people knew everybody that bowled action, but it was the guy that came in, and you know he was Said, 175, hey, yo, I'm, I'm 150, I'm 122, 125. Yeah, yeah, I'll bowl you. You know, and they started matching. <laughs> Yeah, you know, he's the guy's 218. winning by 10, 20, winning by, and then all of a sudden he shoots 2-teen out of nowhere. Yeah. Uh, that, that didn't go over too well for the guys that bet yeah. in the back. I like that. Go ahead. You, do, you've sheet more than I do right now. So. Sheet. To sheet is to take it off the sheet. And what that means is if you have a strike in the third frame and then finish the whole game with strikes, you sheet the game. Right. You take, all the, uh, you take it off the sheet. All the strikes, finish the game. That's it. The worst thing is when you say, well, I need to sheet this to make the cut. Yeah. That usually never happens if it's, I've, like, in the second frame. <laughs> like, hey, uh, starting the last game, I could really use a sheet here. I need, yeah, I, could, I have to sheet this. You're averaging 185, but you needed to sheet it for 279 to make the cut. It's, it's usually not the case. That's probably getting you Doesn't in trouble. happen too often. No. Uh -uh. So we went over some terms today. If you guys have any more terms, please put yeah. them in the comments or tag us. Uh, we'd love to go over them. But we went over a few of the ones that are fairly well known. Yeah, and they were a lot of fun to talk about. Yeah, and I'm sure there's plenty more out there that we haven't got into yet. Yeah, send some in.